Hello everybody, I hope you're doing good. Uh, so, I don't know how much you know about uh, ancient Chinese history or jewelry or whatever. Um, I have to confess, and I think maybe I've said it before, I'm not sure if I said it on a public uh, broadcast or on a sponsor's broadcast, but I am... Uh, fascinated by uh, by it and I really do love to watch uh, movies and uh, TV shows on this subject and one of my most favorite periods is a kind of like the first half of the Qing Dynasty and especially the time um, of the Emperor Qianlong, his dad, his grandfather, and his son. And uh, if you like that kind of stuff, I can recommend you my most um, favorite of these. Um, some of them, a couple of them you can find on Amazon. Uh, and one of them is on the freebie. On Amazon Prime would be um, Rui's uh, Royal Love in the Palace. And Empress is in the Palace is actually the time right before that. And on freebie is a story of Yanzi Palace. And it's kind of like the Rui, but from a different, I mean, the it's like the villains and the good people are vice versa. So anyway, uh, just to get to our subject today, uh, especially during that time, during that era, uh, there was a type, and don't get me wrong, I'm against doing that but the, the jewelry is absolutely gorgeous. And especially because of that, I want to show you a way of doing something similar, if you so wish, without harming any animals. So essentially what they were doing, there's a specific kingfisher bird that is a native to China that has gorgeous uh, blue feathers and it's tiny 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 so they were using these feathers in um, jewelry and uh, of course in combination with gold silver coral amber um, interestingly enough uh, silver was more desired for jewelry than gold during that time but just to show you a few examples I got here, of course, they were using those hairpins. So this would be a hairpin. And of course, we are not going to, into doing all this super intricate uh, stuff. Uh, it was also used on the famous crowns that they had. And on this one, you can actually Let's go to it and see if we can get a bigger. There you go. You can actually see the feathers. And yes, sometimes they even had bronze on them. Not just gold and uh, silver. This is one of the crowns. And uh, at, oh, you see how delicate and intricate and there's got some turquoise in it. <clears throat> excuse me, some lapis. Um, they were also using agate and uh, sardonyx. That is the um, white banded agate. But let's do this. So you can see them in See, this is one of the crowns, and this is that one of the, the shows I was uh, mentioning. And here she's wearing another crown. 
So as you can see, they are very beautiful and very intricate. Now, what do we need for that? Let me get back to this. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Darla. Hi, Christina. Um, so uh, what we need for that, and we can do it fairly easy, uh, you need a combination of, this is uh, Primo, right? And it is half and half, hold on, I got the wrong one, half and half a white pearl and turquoise. It does look a tad lighter than it should be, but I wanted it to look like that because uh, it is based on the mica shift effect. And as we know, when we look at the side, not on the shiny part, it's going to be darker. So the combination of this and the darker side will make it exactly the color that we need it to be. And actually, I forgot to show you the bird in, in question. So you can see how pretty it is. I just shudder to think how many of these little darlings have been killed because there was only one portion of their feathers that was able to, to be used. So you can see how adorable they are. They are absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, so back to our thing. Huh. Uh, so you will also need, uh, this is very important uh, for what uh, you will also need a uh, texture that allows you to do uh, satin slice. Okay, hold on. I forgot to turn off the display. That allows you to do satin slice. Uh, that is very, very important. And then you will need, otherwise it's fairly easy to make. You'll also need a regular rigid blade. And it's up to you if you choose to, a, a gold or a silver, uh, it's up to you if you choose to use the um, my favorite art alchemy is remember for the gold especially ancient gold effect i use the aged brass but you can also use acrylic paint or uh, mica powder and i do recommend that you use perfect pearls because remember you, you do not need to seal that one and you don't want any kind of sealant because on, on this type of jewelry, only the metal part is shiny. And even that is not very shiny because, hello, it's antique. Hi, Elaine. I am glad to see you and I'm glad that you made it. So uh, what I chose, this, if I'm not mistaken, I got uh, This is a, um, a texture for liquid clay, actually. And there are several others. I don't know why I only got this one. Because I know for a fact I have other ones too. No, I have a blue one. And uh, I did this also with my sponsors a little bit over a year ago. Oh well, we're going to just use this one. Um. And of course, my most favorite is the cool tools and they are all kinds of stuff. And But you can choose a thicker one if you so desire. Uh, if you can do it more um, modern if you want, uh, like this jitterbug of uh, Helen Braille. But just to start it with, I am going to cut and stack this. It is a little bit time consuming and you will see why. Just because you want to obtain that specific effect. Maybe I should have gotten it a little bit bigger, but 
we'll go ahead and try and do it like this. I'm going to do this one and then for the other texture I'll make a bigger piece. So I'm going to be careful and cut it so I would have perfectly uh, straight pieces. No, I do need to cut it bigger. <laughs> I don't know what was in my mind. So let me get a bigger piece. Let me actually get the whole thing again. I'm hearing some noises from outside and it stresses me out and whenever I'm trying to... <laughs> Try to get a very close to perfection mica shine, okay? So, let me... Well, actually, it wasn't a big deal. I don't know I had to do that, but I will do it nevertheless. So, once again... It wasn't very even. So you want it to be pretty much even all over. And now what you want to do, we are going to cut it very, very finely. Okay, you know, I have this thing with cutting and chopping and and restabilize it. And I'm going to cut on the other side. I swear to you guys, I am, <coughs> pardon my, um, my lack of manicure, I am trying to catch up with the weeds in my garden. And it's a never losing battle, because they grow faster than I can, than I can, uh, pull them out and my main enemy is sticky weed. I don't know if you have sticky weed where you live. It's a bane. One because it uh, <coughs> I have post nasal drip and allergies. Um, because it will, it's kind of like half a vine and it practically suffocates other stuff. Hi, Cheryl. Um, but also because it's sticky and unfortunately in my areas, ticks are already up. I do wear a light colored pants with a, an elastic at the bottom very very light gray so that allows me to see them when they try to get to me but uh, as I said it's very hard to to remove and especially I mean it's easier in the more open areas of my garden but like I've been battling all morning there are a lot of them who got between my irises and my daily leaves and the irises and daily leaves are very thick there. So, it's a pain to try to get them 
from in between and of course because the the stickiness is due to some tiny tiny little hooks they have on them similar to the velcro hooks and i do have a light slight allergy to it so it causes me redness and itchiness and stuff even if i try to wear gloves there are some that would get past my wrists so okay so this would be let me do a couple more times you want to do a lot of these cuts to get that feathery look and uh, this is not something i can use um, resin on because it's not going to be resin so and you can already kind of start seeing how it it shapes up to look like and you can make pendants you can make earrings you can put them on a bracelet you can make tiled bracelets And I'm trying to go by with Claritin. It doesn't work as good as Benadryl, but Benadryl is my number one sleeping pill. So if I take a Benadryl during the day, I'm gone for the day. And I hope that people that are going to be in the storm's paths tomorrow and Tuesday will be safe okay this should be good enough and very careful when you cut the slice make sure that you cut it in the length of the of the lines uh yeah i do cut so many times to obtain the mica shift effect that will make them look like the kingfisher uh feathers so i am going to cut a, sli a couple slices of this actually let me first cut this so I can have a fairly straight base. And this too. I will keep a, a separate little slice to put resin on so i can give you the the way it's going to look i'm going to put this to the side and resin it so you can see how it looks like it's a super super delicate effect all right now for the next part i'm going to grab some uh, have some very light gold down here but you don't really you can use any kind of gold you want including antique gold because you're gonna cover it anyway so let me get it through the machine a couple times only all right and as i said i'm going to do this one because it allows more stuff to be seen okay you know my fast and easy way of doing the satin slice
and you don't need to do a backing for it because you can directly put uh, wax or uh, or um, acrylic or whatever you decide on the back. Remember, old style jewelry did not have texture on the back because they were using sand casting. And I'm forever grateful to Lisa Pabelka for showing the pivoting blade technique. I still want to get this little area shaved off. There we go. Because the better it's shaved off, the better we'll see the underlying part. All right. Now let's grab our a little thing here. I am doing a little bit, just a little bit of uh, pulling so I can get enough. Uh, see, I needed much. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, I'm so bad. I broke it. I don't want to have to keep you here forever. Okay, we still have the effect. And you can cut it with a cutter or you can just use your exacto knife to you know cut the and another thing that I would suggest after you cut it and after you bake it and everything also run some gold or silver up to you on the edges to make it look even more like and there we go And then you simply add Be very careful not to touch the blue with this obviously And I'm going to use a needle actually to cut. I'm using the needle because, yes, I cannot find my exacto knife. I'm always losing it. I need, I think I need to buy like two or three of them. And then promptly lose them all. Right. Actually, here I think I can use the cutting blade. And then I'll show you a trick to add a little bit more, even more oomph to it. And 
And if you're going to ask me, why didn't you make sure that you find your exacto knife before starting this? Because I was in the garden. And after I'm in the garden, I need to lay down for half an hour because it hurts. So remember, you do the gold all the way on the edges. This needs to be a little bit more. There we go. Kind of, sort of. Remember, this is just to show you how it's not going to be absolutely perfect. And to give it a little bit even more oomph, I'm going to grab a bit of red. You see how we have here all these little circles? Like you can see them better here, all these little circles here. They make actually perfect spots. Let me make a thing. A perfect spots to place coral. And you can use anywhere from cadmium red to uh, pomegranate. Coral has many shades and some of it, it can even be white or pink and I have a Finnegan here, here. Once I am able to, when it gets hot and I'm, I'm going to start the AC, I'll be able to close this door. But it feels so good, the weather was so good lately because at night it cools enough that it doesn't get too hot during the day even if it gets to 80 so one two three four five six five six and this one isn't good and this one is not good. Okay. So I'm going to simply make little roundlets. see how you can make a very complicated looking as I said you won't be able to see on the made one uh, the kingfisher effect but as I said I kept a piece and I am going to resin it so you can see the effect after it's baked You can also use, if you want, you know, just do it plain, choose your um, pattern, and then just put some uh, half strips that you can make with uh, an extruder. I mean, half uh, strings. You can get it to the half circle, the small half circle. Uh, die and there we go we have a pretty you can make a bro brooch out of it okay let me put this to the side and let's do one for the cool tools one. Get back to the machine with this. 
and you do not want to make a stronger um, um, pearlescent because you're not interested in the shininess. You're interested in that line, line, line that would be very difficult otherwise to obtain. I mean, you'd have to work way more. <laughs> that I can cut larger now. So you cut your <clears throat> and stack your piece for about the size of your um, of your texture, whatever your texture goes for. So once again, I'm going to cut all the extra. So that I can have Yeah, and for me, it's absolutely fascinating the 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 costumes that were, what they were wearing and uh, the whole intrigue of the imperial harem and talking about imperial harem if you are if you like history and stuff uh, look on YouTube for the for a, a, a video. I might look at it while we are waiting for the for the resin to cure. Um, it's about the most important women in the Ottoman Empire because as much as the Ottoman Empire was completely patriarchal and women were confined to the harem and were never seen and whatever there are a few women who actually ruled the Ottoman Empire and more or less behind their sons or their husbands but not only uh, one of them was actually of I made up, I made a mess, uh, a Ukrainian origin slave that was, you know, captured during one of the Ottoman wars and brought to the palace to be a concubine and she, hi Lenka, and she managed to get the Sultan's eye and became his favorite and then he married her and also talking about uh, history <clears throat> another one of my most uh, favorite history times are the plantagenets and the whole war of the roses thing and the tudors but if you want to watch an awesome series again uh, search on YouTube Dan Jones Plantagenets um, and you'll see that there are several separate videos but he also has I mean it's on the history something channel uh, but he also has a, there's also a video with all the Plantagenet videos together 
and it's fascinating. What do you want? Li want? I like intrigue in history. It was amazing. And it's also amazing to see actually how little changed. Of course, something changed. There are no more marriages, arranged marriages between royal houses for politics now. Marriages have been replaced by international conglomerate companies. But I don't want to bring politics in it. I'm, I'm just bringing in history. Just in case you're interested. You know. So yeah, you'll have to do like four or five uh, passes. Yeah, she was a favorite overall, but then he married her. Uh, Roxolana was her original name. And of course, after the Sultan's death, she became the Valide Sultan, the, the mother, and she continued. And this was during the Renaissance period. And she's not the only one. I'm talking about this. Yeah, look on YouTube, Catherine. You will love Dan Jones. He is, he is also a little bit of eye candy. But... Um, the way he talks is so passionate and so, and he goes into so much detail about not just, you know, expressing the historical facts, but he brings their whole, the whole era in front of your eyes. And uh, he, he gives a lot of personality to the historical characters. And explains also how sometimes, you know, there are the, the personal dramas that actually determined certain events. Like, you know, the queen who divorced the king of France and married the king of England. You can imagine there was a lot of hurt feelings there that determined a lot of wars and stuff. And talking about harem life, if you like fantasy, I'll also look for another movie that's on uh, YouTube's. Yes, I know. And I do, as I said, I do have my preferences. It's the um, medieval England, uh, China during that era. A part of Korea, medieval Korea, Goryeo. Um, and of course, Egypt. And I'm talking about ancient, ancient Egypt. Okay, one more pass and we, we are good to go. You see how it starts getting the, the lining. But again, as I said, do not try to, to make it more pearlescent because you're not interested in the shininess. You're more interested in the line pattern you can make depending on what you're looking for you can make even up to four pieces depending how high you stack your stuff okay now we are good
and again cut along the lines not like this because you're going to mess up the pattern if you cut across and I messed up things happen This was the slice to fix the other slice, and this should be the slice to work on. All right, and there we go. All right, so <clears throat> this is the cool tools and let me actually use this one because I have more uh, more space that shows the the inside. So once again, I go first. I go first with my fingers. Your fingers need to be non-sticky. So if they are sticky, use some alcohol. And then I'm going to use my, uh, this you can find in my Amazon influencer store. There's a pack of six for like, I think $10. <clears throat> and they're gonna last forever. They are cosmetic sponges. Just make sure that you get those that clay in all the little lines. Uh, I'll search and, and give you the link for what I'm talking about. I said when we are going to wait for the resin to cure, I'll do the search on YouTube. Okay, so I don't have everything. These are way finer than uh, the other one. So might require a little bit more work but it's all worth it. I don't want to risk my finger to get stuck with and then stuck on it and then lift a whole bunch. I'm going to take care of those spots in an instant. Okay, so let's get back on here. But I find this method, instead of putting uh, just a little bit at a time in, I find it much faster. And that's the main thing people complain about the satin slice is how long it takes to put every little piece there without getting other stuff out. Okay, still have a little piece here. But the finer the line, the longer this process will be. That is the truth. 
thing and just one. Tiny bit here. And there we go. We got all of it nice. this back before I get okay so going to use this and use the tip of your fingers that way also the um, the base clay will get stuck to the tile and it will be much easier to remove and, uh, yeah the Joseon was nice I like did you watch uh, I don't think it's on Prime or anything I think it's like on Netflix Empress Key that's a really nice series too that's exactly in the Joseon period And there we go. A beautiful, beautiful, very delicate thing. So I'm going to cut it. Oops, not here, here. This is already pretty much cut. golden it up and then we can add some coral and stuff too very delicate remember you you do not want like I did here you don't want to touch the and you'll ask me isn't it easier to just simply do the uh, the texture if you're putting gold on it anyway, why bother with the... I can come back later and cut these. Why bother with a certain slice? Well, if you do it as a texture, I can assure you that what's going to happen is that the mica lines are going to get messed up. Trust me, I tried. So... You can try, but it's not going to come up as pretty okay so we're gonna get four just four that's not to make it too don't want to have them even After I'm done, I'm going to look again for my uh, and there we go. So give me a second. Let me put a resin on uh, on that piece here, maybe. Cut another piece. 
try and cut it evenly. Don't even need a lot. I just need to cut properly. That's all I need. You know what? Let me get the long one. I'm gonna have a little piece of it that's good to resin. Sorta, of, kinda. Okay, now let's put this in and give it a little bit of resin love. And while it will be curing, I will look for that uh, it's a uh, and you know how there are some history documentaries that are just plain they are showing you castles and they are showing you all kinds of stuff and then there are um document historical documentaries with recreation Now, it still is going to have a little bit of shininess, but it won't be as much shiny. Remember, you're not buffing it, but I'm just doing this to show you better the, the effect. And I'll, I'll refocus in a close-up so you can see the effect better. Okay, let me... Uh, Oh yeah, and the, the music, it's also awesome. It's Chronicle. It's actually, you can find the um, playlist as well. So it's on Chronicle Medieval uh, History Documented. This is how it looks like. And it is absolutely awesome. See like here's a And he has a lot of other see Dan Jones is a great historian as I said I I love the way that he presents stuff like 56 videos as you can see i watched most of them because <laughs> you can see they've been yeah this is dan jones anyway so getting back to our little kingfisher stuff hi francis how's the weather in michigan Okay, now I'm going to refocus stuff here and get these close-ups so you can see them better. Alrighty. So... All right, the pure effect. Let me make the the light a little bit darker. So you can see better, hopefully. There is a, a line effect 
see and it's very very delicate and very much like the effect seen in kingfisher jewelry is it this feathery stuff now if you were good if you want to use this effect in something else if you were to to use it and buff it or resin it it's not as showy maybe as other effects but you can see it and let's look at it weather combination so you can see it underneath the the golden part you can see the kingfisher effect and as i said i messed up i normally bring these up to my eyes and do this with very much care but you can see the lines effect of the kingfisher did i do the other one? Oh, i just dropped it so this is it if you want to try them you can uh, of course get inspiration from you can google stuff and see more so you uh, theoretically what you look for is for Ting kingfisher jewelry okay so and you go on images as you can see this is the query and you get all the the stuff here that you can try i mean it would be interesting to to try something like this it wouldn't even be very hard and because um, you'd only have to put a line along the um, nothing as you can see the uh, here they are used feathers from different parts of that bird remember how i showed you the birds how on some areas is a brighter blue and some areas is a darker blue you can use um you can add a pinch of the peacock pearl and do a little bit of a um, um, skinner blend uh, like this and you can do all kinds of other stuff with them because these are mostly hair ornaments you can see how delicate and pretty they are this is another crown here but um how good does this is uh, and you can you can inspire yourself it doesn't have to be exactly identical but it's a butterfly no it's not a butterfly it's two different semi-circular because if you look at the kingfisher itself it has different um, hues of blue of that blue like this one there's all kinds of stuff that that you can make using this effect and i hope you'll have fun uh doing it now i'm going to rest half an hour for my back and i am back to my garden my if you haven't seen my irises started blooming too and in just a second i'll show you if you're not following me on uh on uh, Facebook I did post a few so this is the beginning of my this year's garden this is when about it's about when February 27 so not even two weeks ago the lilac was budding I had forsythia and the binka was in bloom 
and the daffodils blue, no no that's a, a month ago March 7 daffodils um, uh, March 30th so this is about a week ago when the spirea started blooming the lilacs and the full bloom spirea and then my immortality iris started blooming and I have quite a good number of buds and I will post more photos so I shall see you all next Sunday and before I forget I'm going to post it's going to start at GMT zero I'm going to have an eclipse sale on my tutorials on the website I will announce in the channel the um, coupon code that you need to enter it's going to be 35% off it's going to last for 24 hours special for the eclipse thing and um, you'll be able to purchase and download all my uh, tutorial paid tutorials that are on my website I also post on the Kaliana design Facebook and probably my own profile so if you want to learn how to make some other four gemstones take advantage of the sale <laughs> thank you so much and don't forget to thumbs up and try this you will love the effect thank you have a wonderful week